Gloomhaven is a campaign game in which players take on the role of mercenaries in the city of Gloomhaven. You will create characters with their own personal motives as to why they seek adventure in Gloomhaven, a city that lies in its own dark corner of the world. There's no shortage of odd jobs and work to be done, and you'll find yourself frequently leaving the city walls for your contracts as you crawl through dungeon after dungeon. All the while, you start to notice that your actions have consequences. Branching paths lead to different outcomes and world events, as your jobs start to unveil something far more sinister beneath the surface. Whether you choose to do good or evil, we hope you enjoy your time in Gloomhaven. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my god, there's, there's so much stuff in this box. Oh, let's take a look what's inside. So here's a hyper summarized version of how the gameplay loop works in Gloomhaven. At its core, Gloomhaven has its players going and clearing a dungeon, going back to Gloomhaven the shop and level up, and repeating these two things over and over again. The first thing you do is create a character. In the beginning, you have these six classes as your options. You have some starting gold, which you'll probably spend on these recommended starting items, and a personal quest card that you're trying to fulfill. Do this and bam, you can start playing Gloomhaven. So from here, you're gonna do the first scenario in this scenario book. Every scenario is going to have an introduction, a setup guide, a conclusion to read once you complete the scenario goal, and finally the rewards. So doing scenarios involves combat. How does that work? Well, every class has a whole bunch of their own ability cards, but every class has a different limit of how much they're allowed to bring into a scenario. So at the start of every scenario, you pick and choose which ones to bring from your available pool to make a hand of ability cards. On every round of combat, players will take two cards in their hand, put them face down in front of them, and everyone flips them once ready. When it's your turn, you pick the top action of one card and the bottom action of the other and do those two actions. But wait, how is turn order determined? Cards have an initiative value in the middle, and when everyone flips, you're all supposed to have a leading card, a card that's positioned on top of the other. And that's your initiative, no picking between two initiative numbers. So how do enemies work? Well, you take out all the monster stat sheets and sleeves for whatever you're fighting in the scenario and shove them in like this. Also, they're segmented because they all have different stats for different levels. All monsters also have their own ability cards, and when the players all flip their abilities, the monsters all flip one too. Oh yeah, monsters also have initiative, so once all the ability cards are face up, you let everything take its turn, starting from the lowest initiative number. Smaller numbers go first. Once everything does a thing, rounds over, go to the next one, repeat until you win or lose the scenario. Here's a weird thing that makes Gloomhaven a special snowflake though, so those two cards you normally play go to your discard pile once resolved, so you have to perform a rest action to get them back. But whenever you rest, one of those discard cards goes to the lost pile, meaning that it's gone for the rest of the scenario. This means you gotta manage your actions carefully because it's possible to run out of cards and lose that way instead of running out of health. Thematically, your character is getting too tired. Here's the kicker though, you can also choose to lose a card instead of health when taking damage. So have fun managing your health and abilities together. All right, that's combat, it's very tactical. How about the non-combat stuff? Well, in your campaign, Gloomhaven, the city, not the game, has a prosperity level that you're trying to increase by improving the city. Your party of characters has a reputation level that changes as you do good and evil, and your party can unlock certain achievements. All these things end up affecting the world as you progress through the game, and you'll often find that scenario rewards change these things, but said things also end up dictating which scenarios you're allowed to do. As you unlock scenarios and achievements, you're gonna put their stickers onto your game board. Also note that everything with the sticker sealing it is locked, and you shouldn't open it until the game tells you to do so. So while your party's in Gloomhaven and not in a dungeon, you're allowed to go shopping, level up, start new characters, basically do all your bookkeeping. But remember when I said your characters have personal quests? Yeah, if that's ever fulfilled from adventuring, your character has to retire once you're back in Gloomhaven. Retiring your character basically removes them from the game, but you end up progressing the world state and unlock more stuff by doing so. You log the retired character in this town records book to honor their legacy, and you can immediately make a new character, even one of the same class if you want. All this stuff culminates into a massive legacy narrative that has its story unfold to you through unlocking a bunch of stuff as you play through the scenarios, and with 95 scenarios in this book, you're gonna have a lot of questing to do. Now to actually review Gloomhaven. As of the writing of this review, we're only 12 scenarios deep, but I mean, that's already like 20 or 30 hours, and we've only just begun scratching through the surface. So because I'm not a blatant dumbass, this review is gonna be very rudimentary since there's so much stuff we just gotta play through still. 
First up, the combat in Gloomhaven is really good. If you like having to think ahead and take into account a bunch of different factors in order to succeed, Gloomhaven definitely scratches that itch. There's a ton of different builds for each class, different abilities to take, items to buy, perks to unlock, and strategies to execute in combat. It's honestly incredible how well the balance is done, considering that the design has to take into account like 47 different enemies, each with eight possible levels and their own ability cards. So yeah, big props for the massive amount of content that's somehow all balanced, varied, and strategic. Unfortunately, there's a flip side to this though, in that while balanced and thoughtful, a complaint a lot of players in my group ran into is that they don't enjoy the feeling of getting weaker as the fight goes on. When you lose cards every time you rest, those are cool, unique abilities that you can't ever use again for the rest of the fight. We really wish that the system was changed so that whenever you rest to get back your discard and lose a card, you instead look at all the cards you brought for the scenario and then lose an amount equal to your old loss pile plus one. This way, your hand still gets smaller and smaller, but at least you still have access to all your abilities to the scenario. Obviously, there are some cards that are an exceptionist that should remain in loss, <coughs> but this change would make the flow of combat so much more satisfying, since most of your thinking happens early in the scenario while you have options, because later in the fight, you start autopiloting since your options are much more limited. Would this be balanced? Probably not, since the game wasn't balanced around this, but goddamn, I wish it was. Next, the sheer amount of content and progression that exists in Gloomhaven is staggering for a board game. You are 100% getting good bang for your buck here, assuming you actually go through everything there is to do. I wager there's like 200 plus hours of the content here. Progression in the game also seems nicely paced, but do be warned, however, that the start can be a little slow if you don't focus on advancing the world state. In our campaign, we like just got the story to finally start going somewhere once we retired our first character because when you open up this town records book, there's a ton of story in here, and I really wish that we decided to heavily focus on getting goals done instead of fucking around and doing a bunch of side quests. If you're like us and want the story to, you know, be there so that you're motivated to progress, for the love of God, make sure you play Gloomhaven with specific goals in mind. Things like rushing someone's personal quest, actually following through a storyline, going hard on either increasing or decreasing reputation. Do not be bipolar, because then you turn Gloomhaven into a slow and boring slog. Because we did a bunch of side questing, it's really easy for us to forget what's going on when there's like three different stories happening that we need to keep track of. Which brings me to the next point. There's tons of things about Gloomhaven that you should know about before getting yourself into it. Stuff like dedicating to being good or bad at reputation I mentioned before. There's a lot of these, like really make sure you donate to the sanctuary. Make sure you have a good storage solution for the components. Like, okay, I get that this is a massive game, and so of course the hardcore board gamers who are buying this are obviously gonna do some research for picking up something like Gloomhaven. Bye, 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 bye. We here at Shelfside value accessibility in our games. Needless barriers to entries are annoying, and so we would argue that the more you have to turn to external sources outside of the game, the less accessible it is. Gloomhaven asks you to do that a lot. And we're not really trying to fix that problem since a lot of it comes from aspects of the game that are so crucial to what it is. Like, as an example, storage is a nightmare, but it has to be if the game is to have this amount of content it provides. Setup and takedown is also ridiculous, but it has to be the case if you want to have all these different monsters with their own unique ability decks and stat sleeves and all these unique tiles they can put on top of the board. So we can't really knock the game too hard for that. But what I will complain about is double-sided tiles, which are super annoying for setup because they have to constantly flip over and check the other sides of tiles when you're looking for the right stuff to place instead of just being able to look at everything at a glance and find exactly what you're looking for. I would 100% pay more money for a slightly bigger game with more punch-out sheets so I don't have to deal with double-sided tiles, especially in a game with like 100-something tiles. More accessibility things that we gotta point out. First, you need storage solutions. You can buy custom inserts from third-party sources. You can buy a bunch of Play-Oh boxes like we did. Whatever it is, make sure your game is organized if you don't wanna waste a bunch of time setting up. Next, we highly recommend playing with a companion app. The go-to everyone seems to use is Gloomhaven Helper, which basically automates all your bookkeeping during combat, which removes a ton of setup and downtime when tracking monsters. These things will ultimately save you dozens of hours of time if you actually play Gloomhaven to completion. One more thing with accessibility, why does this game have no appendix? Instead, we have this 50 page rulebook that is pretty mediocre. Its saving grace is that the table of contents is good and the back has a nice reference guide with page numbers for everything. But aside from that, I can't praise it for much else. Like sure, everything's here and there's tons of sections that are organized, but then there's also stuff that just isn't organized. Example, on page 20, it notes that when monsters die, they drop money, but not if the monster was a summon or spawn outside of the normal scenario spawning. Okay, but why the hell is this in character turn and attacking and not under the part about monsters? Gloomhaven desperately needs an appendix, which thank God someone out there made. And it also desperately needs an FAQ, which also thank God someone else out there made on Board Game Geek. I want to tie all those last points together into the main idea, and it's that Gloomhaven asks for a lot from its players to get it going, which I get it, it's a huge game, but there's still lots of quality of life changes that need to be done. Okay, scoring time. So since this is a quick review and all, and we need more play time, this is just going to be a tentative scoring which is our feeling about how we're gonna score the game once we drop the bigger, more in-depth review once we play more. Currently, the tentative score is a seven out of 10. It's good. Gloomhaven is basically a really good board game that's buried under a bunch of bullshit.
that that's up to the players to sort out and fix. And once that's all done, you're in for a really cool experience. That's where we currently stand when trying to critically analyze Gloomhaven. The game has really unique characters, a really cool world that I wish we had more flavor for, and a good progression and build variety to really keep you playing. We say good progression with an asterisk because we're pretty sure it's supposed to be smooth, but it's just that our party f***ed it up by going all over the place with our direction. But again, that's another one of those you should know things about Gloomhaven, and the less of those we have, the better. Ultimately though, if you enjoy dungeon crawlers and have one, two, four players, definitely pick up Gloomhaven. It's absolutely a good one. So for my personal tentative score, I'm gonna give Gloomhaven a seven out of 10. I think it's pretty good. So I wasn't really there for all that BS Daniel had to go to. Oh my God, Daniel is a goat for doing all this. He stored everything in the game. He bought Play-Doh boxes, he cut it all out, and he even got a start on the app. I think that's crazy. I didn't go through that. So it's just been pretty much smooth, enjoyable for me. I've been playing as a spell weaver, and yeah, the more I play that class, the more I like it. There's just a lot to unpack there. Gloomhaven is a really big box, and sometimes I'm pretty glad I don't own the game because setup and takedown is insane. It takes about, what, an hour to set up and take down every time you play? No, th that more. is exaggeration. Well, without the app, it's really long. I remember <laughs> just sitting there and being like, hey, are we playing yet? Huh. Like, it's probably in actuality like 10, 15 minutes, but that still, that feels like forever, right? So. Yeah, yeah. And especially with the, uh, without the app, it's, sometimes it's kind of hard to see what's going on, on the board. The visual clarity is not the best. Oh yeah, I remember we were complaining a lot about how the uh, standees for monsters. It was really hard to see the numbers of them to tell yeah. which ones are actually damaging. Exactly. Hey, if you sit close enough where you have the app, it's a lot easier. I've been mostly playing all the side missions and it's just, oh, kill all enemies. Ha ha, go to the end. And wow, look, this room is exactly the same as that room, just with different elements. It, it gets kind of boring after a while, but hey, at the end of the day, the combat is pretty cool. So that's always interesting to work around with. I grew up playing games like Hero Quest, and a couple years ago, Daniel and I finished our campaign of Descent. And man, those were really enjoyable. I tend to like dungeon crawlers. This is a little more on the complicated side, and I'm not exactly the biggest fan of that, but over time, I got used to it, and so I think it's pretty good. Maybe my score might raise in the future, especially when we unlock more classes, I try more stuff out. Seven out of 10 for me. As for where I personally stand on Gloomhaven at the moment, it's a six out of 10, above average experience. While I'm playing the game, I'm constantly asking myself, why isn't this just a video game? Like, there's so much stuff here that really went wide without much depth that I question, why not just turn into a video game where we can now go even more wide because you don't have to deal with physical limitations? So you can put in stuff like even more monsters, bigger ability decks, more encounter variety in unique locations, all of which would be currently unreasonable to add without expansions since that's so much space. Like, the amount of bookkeeping here is just, is just insane. I don't think Gloomhaven particularly benefits at all from being a board game. There's all these events and flavor text in the game that I wish was presented with a digital medium where they could add lengthier lore descriptions, branching dialogue trees, cutscenes, all the standard RPG stuff. That's a lot. Yeah. There's a lack of world building for how cool the world is. Like, dialogue is fairly one dimensional, and there's not enough interesting quests where you use something special that isn't just killing a whole bunch of dudes. Actually, funnily enough, Gloomhaven is on Steam right now in early access. And I have a hunch I would have enjoyed the game much more if our squad just waited till its official release and we could all play together. Hopefully they take advantage of Gloomhaven being on PC and add in stuff that would have been impossible in a board game like the aforementioned branch and dialogue pass and more detailed events. But yeah, during Gloomhaven sessions, I have the question, why am I not just playing like, I don't know, Baldur's Gate or Divinity Original Sin? Games that are just as, if not more tactical and offer so much more in the way of story and narrative. As a result, I'm basically playing Gloomhaven for the combat and little else. Because it definitely is really fun to play in your turn and coordinate with your party. From what I understand, this is just a standard for dungeon crawlers. I have played me some Hero Quest and Descent and had a blast just mindlessly killing stuff. And maybe I was hoping for too much when I saw that Gloomhaven is number one on Board Game Geek. There's also the fact that everywhere you look involving Gloomhaven, things are marked with spoiler tags, which got me pretty excited as my imagination got worrying. But yeah, don't let this review be a Debbie Downer because the combat Gloomhaven is absolutely a major boon for the game. It's easily one of the best ones out there for dungeon crawlers. I didn't go over monster behavior, but enemies act in a very consistent, challenging way that's extremely functional. Though, granted, I personally wish there were some tweaks made to it because I kind of just feel like I'm abusing AI whenever I play. I prefer dice rolling and slightly more variable monster behavior because in Gloomhaven, there's definitely a tendency for monsters to just all group up on the same guy because of how they work. I kind of wish that at the start of the round, each enemy would individually choose a random target player to focus on for the round. And since it's at the start of the round, players can pick their cards while accounting for this. However, this would just further complicate bookkeeping. But again, if this were a video game, they could make it as complicated as they want because it's all automated. Or like, why didn't they just go the Mansions of Madness route and provide a companion app for the players so they can just cut down the components while also smoothing out the flow of gameplay? My personal TLDR for Gloomhaven is that it should have been designed alongside a companion app 
or have just been made into a PC game. As such, it's hard for me to get super into it since the combat, while amazing for a board game, is still lesser to PC tactical RPGs. And if I wanted a story-driven campaign, I could just be playing Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, this is our quick review for Gloomhaven. Again, our opinions and assessment is early and tentative since we haven't played through enough of the game yet, and here's hoping that scores improve with further playthroughs. We hope you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye. I grew up playing games like HeroQuest. Where the hell are we? Oh, it's right there. Uh, I'm blocking <laughs> yeah. HeroQuest. Okay.